This is section 22 of The Complete Works of George Saville, First Marquis of Halifax. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. A Character of King Charles the Second, read by John Greenman. 1. Of His Religion. A character differeth from a picture only in this. Every part of it must be like, but it is not necessary that every feature should be comprehended in it, as in a picture, only some of the most remarkable. This prince, at his first entrance into the world, had adversity for his introducer, which is generally thought to be no ill one, but in his case it proved so, and laid the foundation of most of those misfortunes or errors that were the causes of the great objections made to him the first effect it had was in relation to his religion the ill-bred familiarity of the scotch divines had given him a distaste of that part of the protestant religion he was left then to the little remnant of the church of england in the faubourg saint germain which made such a kind of figure as might easily be turned in such a manner as to make him lose his veneration for it in a refined country where religion appeared in pomp and splendor the outward appearance of such unfashionable men was made an argument against their religion and a young prince not averse to raillery was the more susceptible of a contempt for it the company he kept the men in his pleasures and the arguments of state that he should not appear too much a protestant whilst he expected assistance from a popish prince all these together with a habit encouraged by an application to his pleasures did so loosen and untie him from his first impressions that i take it for granted after the first year or two he was no more a protestant if you ask me what he was my answer must be that he was of the religion of a young prince in his warm blood whose enquiries were more applied to find arguments against believing than to lay any settled foundations for acknowledging providence mysteries etc a general creed and no very long one may be presumed to be the utmost religion of one whose age and inclination could not well spare any thoughts that did not tend to his pleasures in this kind of indifference or unthinkingness which is too natural in the beginnings of life to be heavily censured i will suppose he might pass some considerable part of his youth i must presume too that no occasions were lost during that time to insinuate everything to bend him towards popery great art without intermission against youth and easiness which are seldom upon their guard must have its effect a man is to be admired if he resisteth and therefore cannot reasonably be blamed if he yieldeth to them when the critical minute was i'll not undertake to determine but certainly the inward conviction doth generally precede the outward declarations at what distances dependeth upon men's several complexions and circumstances no stated period can be fixed it will be said that he had not religion enough to have conviction that is a vulgar error conviction indeed is not a proper word but where a man is convinced by reason but in the common acceptation it is applied to those who cannot tell why they are so if men can be at least as positive in a mistake as when they are in the right they may be as clearly convinced when they do not know why as when they do i must presume that no man of the king's age and his methods of life could possibly give a good reason for changing the religion in which he was born let it be what it will but our passions are much oftener convinced than our reason he had but little reading and that tending to his pleasures more than to his instruction in the library of a young prince the solemn follies are not much rumpled books of a lighter digestion have the dog's ears 
some pretend to be very precise in the time of his reconciling the cardinal de retz etc i will not enter into it minutely but whenever it was it is observable that the government of france did not think it advisable to discover it openly upon which such obvious reflections may be made that i will not mention them such a secret can never be put into a place which is so closely stopped that there shall be no chinks whispers went about particular men had intimations cromwell had his advertisements in other things and this was as well worth his paying for there was enough said of it to startle a great many though not universally diffused so much that if the government here had not crumpled of itself his right alone with that and other clogs upon it would hardly have thrown it down i conclude that when he came into england he was as certainly a roman catholic as that he was a man of pleasure both very consistent by visible experience it is impertinent to give reasons for men's changing their religion none can give them but themselves as every man has quite a different way of arguing a thing which may very well be accounted for they are differing kinds of wit to be quick to find a fault and to be capable to find out a truth there must be industry in the last the first requires only a lively heat that catcheth hold of the weak side of any thing but to choose the strong one is another talent the reason why men of wit are often the laziest in their inquiries is that their heat carrieth their thoughts so fast that they are apt to be tired and they faint in the drudgery of a continued application have not men of great wit in all times permitted their understandings to give way to their first impressions it taketh off from the diminution when a man doth not mind a thing and the king had then other business the inferior part of the man was then in possession and the faculties of the brain as to serious and painful inquiries were laid asleep at least though not extinguished careless men are most subject to superstition those who do not study reason enough to make it their guide have more unevenness as they have neglects so they have starts and frights dreams will serve the turn omens and sicknesses have violent and sudden effects upon them nor is the strength of an argument so effectual from its intrinsic force as by its being well suited to the temper of the party the genteel part of the catholic religion might tempt a prince that had more of the fine gentleman than his governing capacity required and the exercise of indulgence to sinners being more frequent in it than of inflicting penance might be some recommendation mistresses of that faith are stronger specifics in this case than any that are in physic the roman catholics complained of his breach of promise to them very early footnote one upon the words of his declaration there were broad peepings out glimpses so often repeated that to discerning eyes it was flaring in the very first year there were such suspicions as produced melancholy shakings of the head which were very significant his unwillingness to marry a protestant was remarkable though both the catholic and the christian crown would have adopted her very early in his youth when any german princess was proposed he put off the discourse with raillery a thousand little circumstances were a kind of accumulative evidence which in these cases may be admitted men that were earnest protestants were under the sharpness of his displeasure expressed by raillery as well as by other ways men near him have made discoveries from sudden breakings out in discourse etc which showed there was a root it was not the least skilful part of his concealing himself to make the world think he leaned towards an indifference in religion he had sicknesses before his death in which he did not trouble any protestant divines those who saw him upon his deathbed saw a great deal 
as to his writing those papers footnote two two papers in defense of the roman catholic religion found in this king's strong box in his own hand and published by king james the second afterwards he might do it though neither his temper nor education made him very fit to be an author yet in this case a known topic so very often repeated he might write it all himself and yet not one word of it his own that church's argument doth so agree with men unwilling to take pains the temptation of putting an end to all the trouble of inquiring is so great that it must be very strong reason that can resist the king had only his mere natural faculties without any acquisitions to improve them so that it is no wonder if an argument which gave such ease and relief to his mind made such an impression that with thinking often of it as men are apt to do of everything they like he might by the effect chiefly of his memory put together a few lines with his own hand without any help at the time in which there was nothing extraordinary but that one so little inclined to write at all should prevail with himself to do it with the solemnity of a casuist two his dissimulation one great objection made to him was the concealing himself and disguising his thoughts in this there ought a latitude to be given it is a defect not to have it at all and a fault to have it too much human nature will not allow the mean like all other things as soon as ever men get to do them well they cannot easily hold from doing them too much tis the case even in the least things as singing etc in france he was to dissemble injuries and neglects from one reason in england he was dissembled too though for other causes a king upon the throne hath as great temptations though of another kind to dissemble as a king in exile the king of france might have his times of dissembling as much with him as he could have to do it with the king of france so he was in a school no king can be so little inclined to dissemble but he must needs learn it from his subjects who every day give him such lessons of it dissimulation is like most other qualities it hath two sides it is necessary and yet it is dangerous too to have none at all layeth a man open to contempt to have too much exposeth him to suspicion which is only the less dishonorable inconvenience if a man doth not take very great precautions he is never so much showed as when he endeavoureth to hide himself one man cannot take more pains to hide himself than another will do to see into him especially in the case of kings it is none of the exalted faculties of the mind since there are chambermaids will do it better than any prince in christendom men given to dissembling are like rooks at play they will cheat for shillings they are so used to it the vulgar definition of dissembling is downright lying that kind of it which is less ill-bred cometh pretty near it only princes and persons of honour must have gentler words given to their faults than the nature of them may in themselves deserve princes dissemble with too many not to have it discovered no wonder then that he carried it so far that it was discovered men compared notes and got evidence so that those whose morality would give them leave took it for an excuse for serving him ill those who knew his face fixed their eyes there and thought it of more importance to see than to hear what he said his face was as little a blab as most men's yet though it could not be called a prattling face it would sometimes tell tales to a good observer when he thought fit to be angry he had a very peevish memory there was hardly a blot that escaped him at the same time that this showed the strength of his dissimulation it gave warning too it fitted his present purpose but it made a discovery that put men more upon their guard against him only self-flattery furnisheth perpetual arguments to trust again the comfortable opinion men have of themselves 
keepeth up human society, which would be more than half destroyed without it. 3. His amour, mistresses, etc. It may be said that his inclinations to love were the effects of health and a good constitution, with as little mixture of the seraphic part as ever man had, and though from that foundation men often raise their passions, I am apt to think his stayed as much as any man's ever did in the lower region. This made him like easy mistresses. They were generally resigned to him while he was abroad, with an implied bargain. Heroic, refined lovers place a good deal of their pleasure in the difficulty, both for the vanity of conquest, and as a better earnest of their kindness. After he was restored, mistresses were recommended to him, which is no small matter in a court, and not unworthy the thoughts even of a party. A mistress, either dexterous in herself, or well instructed by those that are so, may be very useful to her friends not only in the immediate hours of her ministry, but by her influences and insinuations at other times. It was resolved generally by others whom he should have in his arms, as well as whom he should have in his counsels. Of a man who was so capable of choosing, he chose as seldom as any man that ever lived. He had more properly, at least in the beginning of his time, a good stomach to his mistresses, than any great passion for them. His taking them from others was never learnt in a romance, and indeed fitter for a philosopher than a knight-errant. His patience for their frailties showed him no exact lover. It is a heresy according to a true lover's creed ever to forgive an infidelity or the appearance of it. Love of ease will not do it, where the heart is much engaged but where mere nature is the motive it is possible for a man to think righter than the common opinion and to argue that a rival taketh away nothing but the heart and leaveth all the rest in his latter times he had no love but insensible engagements that made it harder than most might apprehend to untie them the politics might have their part a secret a commission a confidence in critical things though it doth not give a lease for a precise term of years, yet there may be difficulties in dismissing them. There may be no love all the while, perhaps the contrary. He was said to be as little constant as they were thought to be. Though he had no love, he must have some appetite, or else he could not keep them for mere ease or for the love of sauntering. Mistresses are frequently apt to be uneasy, they are in all respects craving creatures, so that though the taste of those joys might be flattened, yet a man who loved pleasure, so as to be very unwilling to part with it, might, with the assistance of his fancy, which doth not grow old so fast, reserve some supplemental entertainments that might make their personal service be still of use to him. The definition of pleasure is what pleaseth, and if that which grave men may call a corrupted fancy shall administer any remedies for putting off mourning for the loss of youth, who shall blame it? The young men seldom apply their censure to these matters, and the elder have an interest to be gentle towards a mistake, that seemeth to make some kind of amends for their decays. He had wit enough to suspect, and he had wit enough, too, not to care. The ladies got a great deal more than would have been allowed to be an equal bargain in chancery for what they did for it. But neither the manner nor the measure of pleasure is to be judged by others. Little inducements at first grew into strong reasons by degrees. Men who do not consider circumstances, but judge at a distance, by a general way of arguing, conclude, if a mistress in some cases is not immediately turned off, it must needs be that the gallant is incurably subjected. This will by no means hold in private men, much less in princes, who are under more entanglements from which they cannot so easily loosen themselves. His mistresses were as different in their humours as they were in their looks. 
they gave matter of very different reflections the last note one the duchess of portsmouth especially was quite out of the definition of an ordinary mistress the causes and the manner of her being first introduced were very different a very peculiar distinction was spoken of some extraordinary solemnities that might dignify though not sanctify her function her chamber was the true cabinet council the king did always by his councils as he did sometimes by his meals he sat down out of form with the queen but he supped below stairs to have the secrets of a king who happens to have too many is to have a king in chains he must not only not part with her but he must in his own defence dissemble his dislike the less kindness he hath the more he must show there is great difference between being muffled and being tied he was the first not the last if he had quarrelled at some times besides other advantages this mistress had a powerful second one may suppose a kind of a guarantee this to a man that loved his ease though his age had not helped was sufficient the thing called sauntering is a stronger temptation to princes than it is to others the being galled with importunities pursued from one room to another with asking faces the dismal sound of unreasonable complaints and ill-grounded pretences the deformity of fraud ill disguised all these would make any man run away from them and i used to think it was the motive for making him walk so fast so it was more probably taking sanctuary to get into a room where all business was to stay at the door excepting much as he was disposed to admit might be very acceptable to a younger man than he was and less given to his ease he slumbered after dinner had the noise of the company to divert him without their solicitations to importune him in these hours where he was more unguarded no doubt the cunning men of the court took their times to make their observations and there is as little doubt but he made his upon them too where men had chinks he would see through them as soon as any man about him there was much more real business done there in his politic than there was in his personal capacity stands pede in uno and there was the french part of the government which was not the least in short without endeavouring to find more arguments he was used to it men do not care to put off a habit nor do often succeed when they go about it his was not an unthinkingness he did not perhaps think so much of his subjects as they might wish but he was far from being wanting to think of himself four his conduct to his ministers he lived with his ministers as he did with his mistresses he used them but he was not in love with them he showed his judgment in this that he cannot properly be said ever to have had a favorite though some might look so at a distance the present use he might have of them made him throw favors upon them which might lead the lookers-on into that mistake but he tied himself no more to them than they did to him which implied a sufficient liberty on either side perhaps he made dear purchases if he seldom gave profusely but where he expected some unreasonable thing great rewards were material evidences against those who received them he was free of access to them which was a very gaining quality he had at least as good a memory for the faults of his ministers as for their services and whenever they fell the whole inventory came out there was not a slip omitted that some of his ministers seemed to have a superiority did not spring from his resignation to them but to his ease he chose rather to be eclipsed than to be troubled his brother was a minister and he had his jealousies of him at the same time that he raised him he was not displeased to have him lessened the cunning observers found this out and at the same time that he reigned in the cabinet he was very familiarly used at the private supper a minister turned off is like a lady's waiting woman that knoweth all her washes and hath a shrewd guess at her stayings 
so there is danger in turning them off as well as in keeping them he had back stairs to convey informations to him as well as for other uses and though such informations are sometimes dangerous especially to a prince that will not take the pains necessary to digest them yet in the main that humor of hearing every body against anybody kept those about him in more awe than they would have been without it i do not believe that ever he trusted any man or any set of men so entirely as not to have some secrets in which they had no share as this might make him less well served so in some degree it might make him the less imposed upon you may reckon under this article his female ministry for though he had ministers of the council ministers of the cabinet and ministers of the ruelle the ruelle was often the last appeal those who were not well there were used because they were necessary at the time not because they were liked so that their tenure was a little uncertain his ministers were to administer business to him as doctors do physic wrap it up in something to make it less unpleasant some skilful digressions were so far from being impertinent that they could not many times fix him to a fair audience without them his aversion to formality made him dislike a serious discourse if very long except it was mixed with something to entertain him some even of the graver sort too used to carry this very far and rather than fail use the coarsest kind of youthful talk in general he was upon pretty even terms with his ministers and could as easily bear their being hanged as some of them could his being abused five of his wit and conversation his wit consisted chiefly in the quickness of his apprehension his apprehension made him find faults and that led him to short sayings upon them not always equal but often very good by his being abroad he contracted a habit of conversing familiarly which added to his natural genius made him very apt to talk perhaps more than a very nice judgment would approve he was apt to make broad allusions upon anything that gave the least occasion than was altogether suitable with the very good breeding he showed in most other things the company he kept whilst abroad had so used him to that sort of dialect that he was so far from thinking it a fault or an indecency that he made it a matter of raillery upon those who could not prevail upon themselves to join in it as a man who hath a good stomach loveth generally to talk of meat so in the vigour of his age he began that style which by degrees grew so natural to him that after he ceased to do it out of pleasure he continued to do it out of custom the hypocrisy of the former times inclined men to think they could not show too great an aversion to it and that helped to encourage this unbounded liberty of talking without the restraints of decency which were before observed in his more familiar conversations with the ladies even they must be passive if they would not enter into it how far sounds as well as objects may have their effects to raise inclination might be an argument to him to use that style or whether using liberty at its full stretch was not the general inducement without any particular motives to it the manner of that time of telling stories had drawn him into it being commended at first for the faculty of telling a tale well he might insensibly be betrayed to exercise it too often stories are dangerous in this that the best expose a man most by being oftenest repeated it might pass for an evidence for the moderns against the ancients that it is now wholly left off by all that have any pretence to be distinguished by their good sense he had the improvements of wine etc which made him pleasant and easy in company where he bore his part and was acceptable even to those who had no other design than to be merry with him the thing called wit a prince may taste but it is dangerous for him to take too much of it it hath allurements which by refining his thoughts take off from their dignity in applying them less to the governing part 
there is a charm in wit which a prince must resist and that to him was no easy matter it was contesting with nature upon terms of disadvantage his wit was not so ill-natured as to put men out of countenance in the case of a king especially it is more allowable to speak sharply of them than to them his wit was not acquired by reading that which he had above his original stock by nature was from company in which he was very capable to observe he could not so properly be said to have a wit very much raised as a plain gaining well-bred recommending kind of wit but of all men that ever liked those who had wit he could the best endure those who had none this leaneth more towards a satire than a compliment in this respect that he could not only suffer impertinence but at some times seemed to be pleased with it he encouraged some to talk a good deal more with him than one would have expected from a man of so good a taste he should rather have ordered his attorney-general to prosecute them for a misdemeanor in using common sense so scurvily in his presence however if this was a fault it is arrogant for any of his subjects to object to it since it would look like defying such a piece of indulgence he must in some degree loosen the strength of his wit by his condescension to talk with men so very unequal to him wit must be used to some equality which may give it exercise or else it is apt either to languish or to grow a little vulgar by reigning amongst men of a lower size where there is no awe to keep a man upon his guard it fell out rather by accident than choice that his mistresses were such as did not care that wit of the best kind should have the precedence in their apartments sharp and strong wit will not always be so held in by good manners as not to be a little troublesome in a ruelle but wherever impertinence hath wit enough left to be thankful for being well used it will not only be admitted but kindly received such charms every thing hath that setteth us off by comparison his affability was a part and perhaps not the least of his wit it is a quality that must not always spring from the heart men's pride as well as their weakness maketh them ready to be deceived by it they are more ready to believe it a homage paid to their merit than a bait thrown out to deceive them princes have a particular advantage there was at first as much of art as nature in his affability but by habit it became natural it is an error of the better hand but the universality taketh away a good deal of the force of it a man that hath had a kind look seconded with engaging words whilst he is chewing the pleasure if another in his sight should be received just as kindly that equality would presently alter the relish the pride of mankind will have distinction till at last it cometh to smile for smile meaning nothing of either side without any kind of effect mere drawing-room compliments the bow alone would be better without them he was under some disadvantages of this kind that grew still in proportion as it came by time to be more known that there was less signification in those things than at first was thought the familiarity of his wit must needs have the effect of lessening the distance fit to be kept to him the freedom used to him whilst abroad was retained by those who used it longer than either they ought to have kept it or he have suffered it and others by their example learned to use the same a king of spain that will say nothing but tiendro cuidado will to the generality preserve more respect an engine that will speak but sometimes at the same time that it will draw the raillery of the few who judge well it will create respect in the ill-judging generality formality is sufficiently revenged upon the word for being so unreasonably laughed at it is destroyed it is true but it hath the spiteful satisfaction of seeing everything destroyed with it his fine gentlemanship did him no good encouraged in it by being too much applauded 
his wit was better suited to his condition before he was restored than afterwards the wit of a gentleman and that of a crowned head ought to be different things as there is a crown law there is a crown wit too to use it with reserve is very good and very rare there is a dignity in doing things seldom even without any other circumstance where wit will run continually the spring is apt to fail so that it groweth vulgar and the more it is practised the more it is debased he was so good at finding out other men's weak sides that it made him less intent to cure his own that generally happeneth it may be called a treacherous talent for it betrayeth a man to forget to judge himself by being so eager to censure others this doth so misguide men the first part of their lives that the habit of it is not easily recovered when the greater ripeness of their judgment inclineth them to look more into themselves than into other men men love to see themselves in the false looking-glass of other men's failings it maketh a man think well of himself at the time and by sending his thoughts abroad to get food for laughing they are less at leisure to see faults at home men choose rather to make the war in another country than to keep all well at home six his talents temper habits etc he had a mechanical head which appeared in his inclination to shipping and fortification etc this would make one conclude that his thoughts would naturally have been more fixed to business if his pleasures had not drawn them away from it he had a very good memory though he would not always make equal good use of it so that if he had accustomed himself to direct his faculties to his business i see no reason why he might not have been a good deal master of it his chain of memory was longer than his chain of thought the first could bear any burden the other was tired of being carried on too long it was fit to ride a heat but it had not wind enough for a long course a very great memory often forgetteth how much time is lost by repeating things of no use it was one reason of his talking so much since a great memory will always have something to say and will be discharging itself whether in or out of season if a good judgment doth not go along with it to make it stop and turn one might say of his memory that it was a beauté journaliere sometimes he would make shrewd applications etc at others he would bring things out of it that never deserved to be laid in it he grew by age into a pretty exact distribution of his hours both for his business pleasures and the exercise for his health of which he took as much care as could possibly consist with some liberties he was resolved to indulge in himself he walked by his watch and when he pulled it out to look upon it skilful men would make haste with what they had to say to him he was often retained in his personal against his politic capacity he would speak upon those occasions most dexterously against himself charles stuart would be bribed against the king and in the distinction he leaned more to his natural self than his character would allow he would not suffer himself to be so much fettered by his character as was convenient he was still starting out of it the power of nature was too strong for the dignity of his calling which generally yielded as often as there was a contest it was not the best use he made of his back stairs to admit men to bribe him against himself to procure a defalcation help a lame accountant to get off or side with the farmers against the improvement of the revenue the king was made the instrument to defraud the crown which is somewhat extraordinary that which might tempt him to do it probably was his finding that those about him so often took money upon those occasions so that he thought he might do well at least to be a partner he did not take the money to hoard it there were those at court who watched those times as the spaniards do for the coming in for the plate fleet the beggars of whose sexes helped to empty his cabinet and to leave room in them for a new lading upon the next occasion these negotiators played double with him too when it was for their purpose so to do he knew it 
and went on still so he gained his present end at the end he was less solicitous to inquire into the consequences he could not properly be said to be either covetous or liberal his desire to get was not with an intention to be rich and his spending was rather an easiness in letting money go than any premeditated thought for the distribution of it he would do as much to throw off the burden of a present importunity as he would to relieve a want when once the aversion to bear uneasiness taketh place in a man's mind it doth so check all the passions that they are damped into a kind of indifference they grow faint and languishing and come to be subordinate to that fundamental maxim of not purchasing anything at the price of a difficulty this made that he had as little eagerness to oblige as he had to hurt men the motive of his giving bounties was rather to make men less uneasy to him than more easy to themselves and yet no ill nature all this while he would slide from an asking face and could guess very well it was throwing a man off from his shoulders that leaned upon them with his whole weight so that the party was not gladder to receive than he was to give it was a kind of implied bargain though men seldom kept it being so apt to forget the advantage they had received that they would presume the king would as little remember the good he had done them so as to make it an argument against their next request this principle of making the love of ease exercise an entire sovereignty in his thoughts would have been less censured in a private man than it might be in a prince the consequence of it to the public changeth the nature of that quality or else a philosopher in his private capacity might say a great deal to justify it the truth is a king is to be such a distinct creature from a man that their thoughts are to be put in quite a differing shape and it is such a disquieting task to reconcile them that princes might rather expect to be lamented than to be envied for being in a station that exposeth them if they do not do more to answer men's expectations than human nature will allow that men have the less ease for their loving it so much is so far from a wonder than it is a natural consequence especially in the case of a prince ease is seldom got without some pains but it is yet seldomer kept without them he thought giving would make men more easy to him whereas he might have known it would certainly make them more troublesome when men receive benefits from princes they attribute less to his generosity than to their own deserts so that in their own opinion their merit cannot be bounded by that mistaken rule it can as little be satisfied they would take it for a diminution to have it circumscribed merit hath a thirst upon it that can never be quenched by golden showers it is not only still ready but greedy to receive more this king charles found in as many instances as any prince that ever reigned because the easiness of access introducing the good success of their first request they were the more encouraged to repeat those importunities which had been more effectually stopped in the beginning by a short and resolute denial but his nature did not dispose him to that method it directed him rather to put off the troublesome minute for the time and that being his inclination he did not care to struggle with it i am of an opinion in which i am every day more confirmed by observation that gratitude is one of those things that cannot be bought it must be born with men or else all the obligations in the world will not create it an outward show may be made to satisfy decency and to prevent reproach but a real sense of a kind thing is a gift of nature and never was nor can be acquired the love of ease is an opiate it is pleasing for the time quieteth the spirits but it hath its effects that seldom fail to be most fatal the immoderate love of ease maketh a man's mind pay a passive obedience to anything that happeneth it reduceth the thoughts from having desire to be content it must be allowed he had a little overbalance on the well-natured side 
not vigor enough to be earnest to do a kind thing much less to do a harsh one but if a hard thing was done to another man he did not eat his supper the worse for it it was rather a deadness than severity of nature whether it proceeded from a dissipation of spirits or by the habit of living in which he was engaged if a king should be born with more tenderness than might suit with his office he would in time be hardened the faults of his subjects make severity so necessary that by the frequent occasions given to use it it comes to be habitual and by degrees the resistance that nature made at first groweth fainter till at last it is in a manner quite extinguished in short this prince might more properly be said to have gifts than virtues as affability easiness of living inclinations to give and to forgive qualities that flowed from his nature rather than from his virtue he had not more application to anything than the preservation of his health it had an entire preference to anything else in his thoughts and he might be said without aggravation to study that with as little intermission as any man in the world he understood it very well only in this he failed that he thought it was more reconcilable with his pleasures than it really was it is natural to have such a mind to reconcile these that tis the easier for any man that goeth about it to be guilty of that mistake this made him overdo in point of nourishment the better to furnish to those entertainments and then he thought by great exercise to make amends and to prevent the ill effects of his blood being too much raised the success he had in this method whilst he had youth and vigour to support him in it encouraged him to continue it longer than nature allowed age stealeth so insensibly upon us that we do not think of suiting our way of reasoning to the several stages of life so insensibly that not being able to pitch upon any precise time when we cease to be young we either flatter ourselves that we always continue to be so or at least forget how much we are mistaken in it seven conclusion after all this when some rough strokes of the pencil have made several parts of the picture look a little hard it is a justice that would be due to every man much more to a prince to make some amends and to reconcile men as much as may be to it by the last finishing he had as good a claim to a kind interpretation as most men first as a prince living and dead generous and well-bred men will be gentle to them next as an unfortunate prince in the beginning of his time and a gentle one in the rest a prince neither sharpened by his misfortunes whilst abroad nor by his power when restored is such a shining character that it is a reproach not to be so dazzled with it as not to be able to see a fault in its full light it would be a scandal in this case to have an exact memory and if all who are akin to his vices should mourn for him never prince would be better attended to his grave he is under the protection of common frailty that must engage men for their own sakes not to be too severe where they themselves have so much to answer what therefore an angry philosopher would call lewdness let frailer men call a warmth and sweetness of the blood that would not be confined in the communicating itself an overflowing of good nature of which he had such a stream that it would not be restrained within the banks of a crabbed and unsociable virtue if he had sometimes less firmness than might have been wished let the kindest reason be given and if that should be wanting the best excuse i would assign the cause of it to be his loving at any rate to be easy and his deserving the more to be indulged in it by his desiring that everybody else should be so if he sometimes let a servant fall let it be examined whether he did not weigh so much upon his master as to give him a fair excuse that yieldingness whatever foundations it might lay to the disadvantage of posterity was a specific to preserve us in peace for his own time if he loved too much to lie upon his own down bed of ease 
his subjects had the pleasure during his reign of lolling and stretching upon theirs as a sword is sooner broken upon a feather-bed than upon a table so his pliantness broke the blow of a present mischief much better than a more immediate resistance would perhaps have done ruin saw this and therefore removed him first to make way for further overturnings if he dissembled let us remember first that he was a king and that dissimulation is a jewel of the crown next that it is very hard for a man not to do sometimes too much of that which he concludeth necessary for him to practise men should consider that as there would be no false dice if there were no true ones so if dissembling is grown universal it ceaseth to be foul play having an implied allowance by the general practice he that was so often forced to dissemble in his own defence might the better have the privilege sometimes to be the aggressor and to deal with men at their own weapon subjects are apt to be as arbitrary in their censure as the most assuming kings can be in their power if there might be matter for objections there is not less reason for excuses the defects laid to his charge are such as may claim indulgence from mankind should nobody throw a stone at his faults but those who are free from them there would be but a slender shower what private man will throw stones at him because he loved or what prince because he dissembled if he either trusted or forgave his enemies or in some cases neglected his friends more than could in strictness be allowed let not those errors be so arraigned as take away the privilege that seemeth to be due to princely frailties if princes are under the misfortune of being accused to govern ill their subjects have the less right to fall hard upon them since they generally so little deserve to be governed well the truth is the calling of a king with all its glittering hath such an unreasonable weight upon it that they may rather expect to be lamented than to be envied for being set upon a pinnacle where they are exposed to censure if they do not do more to answer men's expectations than corrupted nature will allow it is but justice therefore to this prince to give all due softenings to the less shining parts of his life to offer flowers and leaves to hide instead of using aggravations to expose them let his royal ashes then lie soft upon him and cover him from harsh and unkind censures which though they should not be unjust can never clear themselves from being indecent end of section twenty two a character of king charles the second read by john greenman